Interesting day today. We managed to get someone to leave a swivel chair and come and join us. Ready to find out who it is? Let's get to it. It's after six again, and I'm excited to kick back after the workday to pick the brains of one of the country's uh, great business leaders. He's one of the busiest people I know. He wears different hats. He's always juggling different industries all at the same time. Let's get to know the man, Lance Gokongwei. Hey, Lance. Hey, hi, man. Super to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank huh? you. Thanks please, for please. having me. Lance, uh, thank you again for joining us here today. And it's a great opportunity to listen a little bit to your life story and get some learnings. But maybe let's just go back in time, Lance. Um, you know, you ended up at Xavier, I think. I was at Xavier since uh, nursery all the way up to uh, second year high school. I finished the last two years of my secondary school in the Anglo Chinese school in, in Singapore. Then subsequently, I went to Penn. You always kind of had a dream that you wanted to go to the U.S. for college, Lance? Yeah, I think you just wanted to explore the world and be in a, in a place where you can meet all sorts of people and maybe develop an identity outside the Philippines. But what was the environment like? I think, first of all, it's really when you go to, I guess, the major schools in the U.S., they really have a very diverse student body and inevitably that creates different perspectives. The second is from having a very coddled life in the Philippines where, you know, Somebody picks up after you, does your laundry, yeah. your food's all prepared. You have to do your own laundry there, Lance? Oh, you learn how to uh, pick clothes that don't require ironing. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about the real world, Lance, you finish, you do well. So you come with, with, with new knowledge, you enter the Philippines and, and you join a family business. No? What did you start, Lance? So every, maybe my, uh, my sophomore year, between when I was an uh, upcoming junior, I spent the summer in the warehouse of our uh, department store. Okay. And here I was, a high-flying Wharton yeah. student. And my job was to put the price tags onto like underwear yeah. or jeans or the like. My junior year, I, I, I spent most of it abroad. I was Then my first job after graduating Summa Cum Laude from Wharton was all my friends were going, oh, I got a job in Goldman Sachs, I got a job in yeah. Morgan Stanley, McKinsey, all the top jobs in the, in the US. Yes. Wow. I got a great job working for my father in Universal Rubina Corporation. <laughs> and I was a salesman there. And uh, I remember my first paycheck. It was yeah. 2,300 uh, pesos. Yeah. But my dad said, I'll treat you differently. I'm going to give you a company car. And he gave me a 20-year-old Datsun. <laughs> <laughs> your father must have been excited about your coming back, Lance. I'm sure you were excited as well. I mean, he's a highly respected man in the true sense of the word. He built something up from scratch. What did you learn from him in those early days? As you entered the company, was there a narrative that took place between you? I, I think if I if there was any underlying theme of, of the narrative was you know, he wanted to be a, a true Filipino business where family would always be involved and he really taught me I think to be a to think of it as, as a steward rather than as a source of income or the like no he always said if you want to do make an impact it's better to be first no it's better to be to take some risks now you're CEO Lance how do you see the business evolving what are the forces that are at work that make you think the business has to change and what's your point of emphasis at this stage where you're now in charge we've been able over the last three to four years to really articulate what we think our company's purpose should be and for us, that's really an unrelenting commitment to providing better choices for our customers and creating shared success for all our stakeholders. And then when you think about shared success, it's really talking about looking at the bigger picture beyond, say, shareholder concerns. Right. You have to look at the, the community, the country, and especially the employee base when, whenever you make decisions. I notice you talk a lot about the digital world now, uh, Lance. I think there's a uh, go time and you've got, uh, you're working on a digital banking license. Tell me a little bit about that world. You can see really the, the technology really embedding throughout society. You have to uh, transform your business to adapt to that. To that change and you read about all these successful startups really fast moving agile great ideas great entrepreneurs and we have a large conglomerate and almost feels like a dinosaur how do you compete in this, this yeah. new world right uh, but then you realize 
Despite being a, a large business, mm -hmm. we do have a lot of substantial advantages, including our corporate exactly. reputations yeah. and our relationships with so many customers, suppliers, and the like. No, I guess uh, I'm here wearing also my own BPI hat, Lance. Financial institutions have a big role to play. Have you had to deal with BPI at all, uh, Lance? I, I say this with a bias in my mind, but uh, <laughs> I think we've had a long banking relationship as well, and one that's no, been no, no. Uh, very positive on both sides. Uh, we've had a very, very long-standing uh, relationship with BPI. And I think for me, the measure of, of a bank is really how they deal with you in good times and bad. And I can say that uh, BPI has always been a reliable partner to, to our group. Of course, I have a special amour for my own bank, Robinson's of Bank. Course. And as a corporate, BPI has really been a, a partner for us. The Feelings Mutual lands because an institution that's continued to grow, you build trust with many clients, including the banking community. And it's always been a pleasure to deal uh, with you guys. If you were to look at young people, you know, coming up the business side, uh, any advice that you would give them? I guess my only advice to young people now is really, I think things that are worthwhile will never always take a long time. They don't really come that easy. Inevitably, maybe because things are so available now, we will be disappointed. Yeah. And the only thing we can do is, if we want to be successful is really just be patient, resilient, and bounce back. Unfortunately, as, as time has moved on and the world is moving now so much more quickly, people expect quicker results. But I could not agree with you more. And I think those are wonderful lessons for young people to hear. So Lance, we'll go to a slightly lighter fare in our discussion today, but you're responsible for the leading snack company in the Philippines. Now we need to know, what are your five favorite snacks, Lance? You're asking the right guy. I'm the only person I know who has a supermarket stand full of snacks in his office. <laughs> okay, okay, run us through it, Lance. So my favorite, my number one is uh, V-Cut. Yeah. So Jack and Jill V-Cut, uh, I like it because it's of its uh, really tangy uh, barbecue flavor. It has multiple flavors, but I really enjoy the, the spicy. And, and spicy who designs nothing. these things? Is this you, Lance? Are you the one that decides <laughs> no, on the taste? I wish I could take credit for this because it's great flavor, but it's really R&D team who, who developed this. Very good. Number two, Lance. Number two is uh, Piatos cheese. And uh, Piatos, uh, we try to say, is like a... Uh, Italian for potatoes. Try very this tasty. one. It's, it's, this one. it's sort of like the uh, favorite snack among all Filipinos. Oh, it's very good. Cheese. Number three. For healthier fare, we have Nova Multigrain, which is a healthy blend of multiple uh, grains in a snack. So this is good for oat. runners, for athletes, stuff like that. Uh, it's hikers. A it's a great picker upper, ah. and uh, it's also yummy. Very good. Very good. Number four, Lance. And this one. After consuming all the healthy Nova Multigrain, <laughs> that leaves you some uh, ability to eat uh, chicharron, uh, chicharron bulaklak. Bulak bulak, very uh, good, very which good. Which is not as healthy, but ultra delicious. Well, we have the whiskey later, Lance. Let's uh, bring out some chicharron bulaklak. Right? That's right. Okay, that's very right. good. And finally, we have our old reliable, uh, the very healthy nuts, which go so well, very well with drinks. Uh, is this a mixed mixed bag, uh, Lance, or one type of nut? Mixed bag goes yeah. well, but I also like peanuts. It's a great list. I'm going to try them all at some point, Lance. <laughs> Uh, Lance, when you were discussing and talking about your father, and I remember that, you know, he was a voracious reader. On your downtime, anything in particular you like to read, anything you like to focus on? I guess my weekly reading are like The Economist and, you know, The New Yorker. It's general reading, assorted stuff. One thing I found really interesting lately, though, is especially uh, during this COVID, is I'm, I'm now into this uh, listening to podcasts where they have a uh, lot of good stuff on well, podcasts. It's such a nice way. Is there any in particular that you recommend? I think uh, Malcolm Gladwell has a, yeah, has a good podcast. I think there's a very good podcast now on Napoleonic yeah. era. Uh, Business Wars is pretty good. There's so many opportunities, be they podcasts, the internet and the like. There's always an ability uh, to learn. It's the only boy in a family <laughs> of, of, of girls. What was it like growing up? We were a very close family, but you're right. You know, you end up with oftentimes a five versus one kind of arrangement. <laughs> so being the only boy teaches you a few skills. I mean, for foremost is you have to be a, a little bit humble. Second, you have to be a little bit of politician yeah. to get the things you want across. Do they gang up on you, Lance? I guess that's why you have to have political skills to sort of break up the, the groupings, right? <laughs> well, I think you guys actually are a great example, Lance. I've, I've always commented that you can see that the interpersonals in your family are superb. You all have a self-deprecating humor. You're always joking. Who had a sense of humor in your family, Lance? I think it's probably a function of both my dad and my mom, and maybe a little bit of the, the way, uh, I guess, from a Chinese heritage, the way parents bring up their kids. Our parents would never praise us, no? Yeah, yeah. But they would never criticize us also. It's all cariño brutal. They use words like 
gongkeang, which which yeah. basically is you're my stupid child. But it's it's a term of <laughs> endearment. Yeah, endearment. Yeah, right? yeah. So that becomes part of yeah. the chatter. And my mom was very, really always laughing and making fun of her forgetfulness and yeah. all this stuff. And I guess that's and my sister Robina is, yeah. is I guess the foremost example of self deprecation. <laughs> they all have a sense of humor, and it's what gets us uh, through the day. And we all need plenty of it uh, these days. Also on your personal side, Lance, I know that you work hard and uh, your hours are long, but you must also have downtime. What do you enjoy uh, doing uh, when you take a break? I also spend time with the family, tend to enjoy our lunches and dinners with both my wife and two kids and with the broader set of family and friends. And then I do enjoy my time alone when, when I usually uh, work out or run on a treadmill and, and catch up on my Netflix at the yeah. same time. The airline business lands, uh, you know, uh, travel is part and parcel, I guess, of of what your business is. Uh, in your own travels, Lance, any favorite places uh, when you move around? Uh, uh, any places you and your family like to go to? And I find that the travel, I enjoy what's most important is who I'm traveling with. So I, in, in the last years of my parents' life, uh, the entire family would take two week trips every year. And those were great. No, those were a great time because we were like 20 of us from a 90 year old all the way down to a five. And we'll go back in time, Lance. You were to choose another career path was there anything that was more prominent in your mind if it had not been in the business world? I mean, when I was uh, much younger, I mean, I really enjoyed playing basketball. So maybe I would have wanted to be uh, a basketball player. Okay. Of course, my skill set uh, yeah. never was commensurate to my aspirations. But I have to say that my older years, they always invited me to be part of the alumni school team. I was always the 12th man because they needed somebody to sponsor the team. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's been a great conversation we've had, Lance, but we're not letting you loose yet. Uh, we've got some true or false questions to ask you. That's great, and I have my own set of questions for you too, uh, Just Jaime. make it go easy on me, Lance. Go <laughs> easy on me. Okay, Lance, true or false? I'll go first, huh? You have free airplane rides from Cebu Pacific. True or false? That's true. Uh, for my personal travel, uh, I have to pay, but for all my business travel, I do get the free uh, Free ticket. Good enough. You never yeah. mix those two together, pretend one is the other. Uh, last, uh, <laughs> I tried to get away with it once, but uh, <laughs> I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been meaning to ask you this. You get free telephone credits from Globe. True or false? Uh, false. Uh, I pay all my bills. I do get a free phone. Uh, that I do get, but, uh, but I have to pay all my bills. <laughs> you always visit your favorite Robinson Small Incognito. True or false? That's true. I visit the malls mm. and my Robinson small people, I think they indulge me and pretend that they don't recognize <laughs> me. <laughs> I have a question for you too. Okay. You shop for street style clothing, yeah. true or false? Well, I think that that's true. I'm not quite sure what street style clothing is, but if it's casual fare, shorts, t-shirts and the like, yeah, I, I, I do. I do buy it. I'm not always in a suit and tie. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, Lance. You're a terror CEO, true or false? Uh, false. I don't think I'm a terror CEO, but I don't think you're asking the right person. You might have to ask my, 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 my staff. I've always make. seen you as a nice guy, Lance. I doubt you're a terror CEO. You host secret Christmas get-togethers with your company CEOs every year. True or false? I'd say that's, that's partly true. I, I, I don't know about the fully secret, but, uh, but we do have smaller gatherings uh, at Christmas time and uh, we have a chance to reflect on the year. And, not really secret, but uh, but yeah, they're private and low-key. Okay, Lance, next question. We've been plagued by this urban legend for decades. About time we set the record straight, okay? There is a real Robinson snake in the bodega of the mall. That's a definite falsehood. Are you sure about that, Lance? No snake, uh, slithering around there. No snake, and if there would have been a snake, yeah. my sister Robina would have caught it <laughs> and converted it into a handbag that she sold in Robinson's. <laughs> There's a rumor that you secretly go to Robinson's to shop or to check out the competition. True or false? Well, I think true. I don't think I've gone shopping there, but it's always nice to go and look at what people are doing, what new ideas they have. Uh, so I have been to your mall to scout it out and see what new things you guys are doing. That's true. That's true. All right, Lance, we're moving on to the next question here. You are John Gokongwe's favorite child. True or false? I would say that's Partially true. <laughs> You're a very confident guy, Lance. Huh? <laughs> Partially true. I definitely won in the, the men's category <laughs> because I'm the only son. <laughs> I'll have a word with your sisters about this. <laughs> Lance, that was a 
What a great segment. Thank you very much for being so open, so relaxed. Uh, we covered everything. We covered your education, your early life, training as a CEO. We talked about your dad. We talked about uh, your sisters. Uh, we talked about your philosophies and where you're taking uh, the JG Summit to group. As I said, uh, one of the great things of, of this difficult period is the ability to work together with you, Lance, to address many of the pain points of this country. Uh, your engagement on all that front is something that you know we all admire and, and respect. Thank you, Jaime, for having me. And I'm looking forward to having a drink, Lance. After six drinks, I can't wait.